Hello everyone and welcome to another OrcadX how-to video. My name is Adam and in today's video we are going to be covering the topic of how to create uh, library parts. Now the part that I've selected for this video is actually a um, USB 2.0 interface uh, from Microchip. I have here opened up the, the data sheet and Microchip actually does a pretty good job of showing you, you know, all the pins on the device. And then if you scroll down, we also have a really good pin description for each pin. So, you know, what the name of the pin is, what the pin number is, as well as, you know, whether it's an input, an output, an IO, or if we keep going down, there's some analog IO pins, as well as power pins, right? Power and ground pins. So these are important because when we're creating our symbol in ORCAD X, we can use that information to then, uh, you know, make our pins a little more detailed. So before we start making the symbol, let's take a look at where we're going to be placing the symbol. I already have this um, BB.OLB, BB stands for Brainboard, uh, which is just a project that I'm going to be working on on the side here. But if you don't know where to place your schematic symbol, I'm just going to do a right click and select Open File Location. Go into your workspace and in the library symbol section, you can select any of these OLBs to add to your active project, or you can even create a brand new OLB if that's how you want to organize, you know, the different symbols which you create from scratch. In my workspace, SPB data, CDS setup, workspace, library symbols, I have this BB.OLB. And then when I start adding symbols to it, I should be able to find those in my component explorer. So let's right click on my OLB and select new part. Now the part prefix, since this is an IC, is going to be U. And then we just want to copy the part name from the data sheet or from the, uh, oops, copy. There we go, USB 3320. Now for the PCB footprint, go ahead and leave that empty because we're going, we're going to be assigning the footprint through Component Explorer. And then you can leave it as a homogenous and part numbering alphabetic, press OK. So here's our untitled part. Let's go ahead and start adding the pins as they are shown in this data sheet. Now, we're not going to worry too much about naming them correctly yet, and I'll show you why in a second, uh, because there's a much quicker way to do that. Now, what I'm going to do is actually move this off to a second screen here, just so that I can view it on the side. And then maybe through some fancy editing, we can put it up in the right top right corner here so you guys can see while I'm adding these pins here. But this is a 33 pin device. So the first thing I'm going to do is just make this uh, outline a little larger so I can fit all my pins. And let's go ahead and start adding some pins. So to do that, I'm going to go into the place pin. And for the number, I'm going to start with number one. And I'll just leave the name empty for now. Now for the shape, a line is usually a longer line, while short is basically just a shorter line that you can use for placing the pin. If you have a preference between one or the other, go ahead and stick with that. I personally usually pick short. Uh, but recently I have been using line again, especially when doing, you know, huge components that have hundreds or thousands of pins, because if you use short, then the pin name will actually extend past the, the actual pin. So let's go ahead and stick with line. For the type, we're going to use passive for now because we're going to assign those a little later. And for the width, we want to set scalar and press OK. Oops, let's go ahead and set the name to A for now and start putting down our pins. And again, we want 32 of these plus one because of the E-pad on the bottom of the pin. So we want 16 on one side and 17 on the other side. There we go. I'm gonna move these down just a little bit because this pin 33 happens to be our E-pad. Now I can either click on every pin and change the name through here. So pin one would be our CLK out pin. 
you know, it's a bit of a long process. But the easiest way to do this is actually click on this edit pins and we get to do this in table view. So again, hopefully here we can show that uh, preview of the part. And then what we're gonna do is just type in the pin name. So the pin two is NXT and press enter. And that will automatically go into the, uh, the next row in our table. So we're gonna speed this up and just go through each pin and assign the correct names. All right, there we go. We've now added the names to all these pins. And if we click OK, it updates instantaneously. And now the last thing that we really need to do, at least in terms of how we define the pins, is choose what type of pin it is. Now, you don't have to do this in order to get a full, you know, schematic and PCB layout. But if we do add the pin types here, then it'll make our life a little easier once we're doing things like assigning constraints because it'll automatically detect, for example, a driver and receiver pin or an input and an output. And it's just nice to have a well-organized schematic with pin types in case maybe someone doesn't know what type of pin you're looking at. So to assign these, I like to organize all my pins by pin name so that, for example, all of these data pins are then easy to, um, you know, group together, or not easy to, they are grouped together and I can then easily, you know, select all of these and change it to for example, uh, this is a bi-directional pin. Then I can copy that and paste it to all of these data pins. There we go, paste, paste, paste. Now, uh, ref cell. Again, we're just going to be using this table that's provided here in the data sheet. So we'll go through each of these pins. So clock out, NXT, et cetera, and set it to, you know, output, input, IO, et cetera. So again, we'll speed through this part a little bit. All right, there we go. So we finished applying all the pin types. If I click OK here, you won't really notice any difference on, you know, on the, the, the visual representation of these pins. But if you start to click on each of them, then you'll actually see the type of the pin and it's set to output. And there's certain checks that you can enable in ORCAD X. For example, if you have an output connected to an output, then that's probably an error. And therefore we would flag a DRC, for example. Well, now, one last thing we want to do um, before we finish up with this part is actually just organize these pins in a way that's a little more representative of its function. So <clears throat> what I like to do personally is, for example, put all my power pins on the left side and any control pins or data pins, etc., on the right side. And depending on how many power pins I have, maybe I'll add a couple of those control pins to the to the left side if there's extra space. But that way, it's just a little easier to connect everything rather than trying to, you know, collect, connect a couple pins here and a couple pins here. And then you have a, a power pin that needs, uh, you know, decoupling nearby it. <clears throat> this way, it keeps our schematic a little cleaner. So again, we're going to speed through this part. I'm just going to reorganize all the pins on this, uh, on this drawing and also leave a little bit of room between them just so that we can, you know, connect, for example, a resistor in series to one of these pins or whatever it might be. All right, let's go.
All right, there we go. So what I've done is I've finished up placing these pins where I believe that they should be. Um, let's just make some minor adjustments here. I do like to leave at least two grid points of space between pins, just in case I need to you know, fit something in between there, like uh, having a wire go between the pins or whatever it might be. It just, in my opinion, looks nicer on the schematic when you have a little bit more space. And also it's just a little easier to work with. For example, again, if I place like a resistor here in line, then I still have some space between those pins, you know, without covering up another wire or whatever it might be. So yeah, I, I did break my uh, rules just a little bit with placing the VBUS pin on the right here, but that's because this is a USB uh, interface here. So we've got the VBUS, D positive and D negative, as well as the ID pin that's coming off of the USB connector. And then here is just some other power nets um, that are gonna be connecting from, you know, from the board. The good thing is, is that you can try something and then as you start laying out your schematic, you can make adjustments. And who knows, maybe I'll make some adjustments to this, but basically we place the pins where we want them. All we want to do now is add a rectangular outline to, let's make sure our grid is on, um, to this symbol. And there's our outline. And now let's go ahead and save it. So I'm just hitting control S on my keyboard. And then we want to be able to use this in uh, our component explorer. So let's go ahead and jump into component explorer. I'm gonna go into my ICs and we're gonna make a new part. So right click, new component. Now the part number, I'm going to follow my CDN-IC-0006 naming scheme. Uh, it's gonna be a category IC. I'm not gonna put in any subcategories, but I will uh, copy this description from, again, the data sheet, just to have a nice description so it's easy to find this part. And then here you can see are a couple properties which are default to all of my uh, IC category. So I'm gonna set the voltage supply here to 1.8 volts to 3.3 volts. The generic name, this is just something that I like to use, um, especially if you have some parts that have really short suffixes on, or sorry, really long suffixes on them, uh, but a generic name, uh, USB 3320. For example, it might have an extension for tape and reel or however else it might be packaged. Maybe there's an automotive version of it. This is just the generic name that I like to use for a part. The minimum temperature for minus 40C to 80C. And then the height and the package. So let's jump into the data sheet again. And we're just gonna <clears throat> find out what that is. This is a uh, 32 pin QFN. So 32 dash QFN and the height according to my data sheet is sideways. So I have to tilt my head, but it's 0 0.85 millimeters, 0 0.85 millimeters. All right. Last thing to do is to assign our schematic symbol. So to do that, go into this model section, click on the attach symbol. Now here is our BB library, which we've been working in, or the um, the OLB, which we've been working in, and simply just check on this uh, checkbox here to attach the schematic symbol, which we've created, and then click save. And now, if everything goes well, we should be able to place the part on our schematic. Now we're not gonna worry about a footprint yet. We'll talk about how to make and attach footprints in the next video. Right click place and there it is on my schematic. So now you can see that since we set some pins as input output or input out or, or IO bidirectional, we now have these really nice, you know, pins that indicate whether or not it is an input. 
And then some of these other pins, you know, we can double click on them and see that, you know, this is an output pin. All right, but there's our part. Uh, one last thing. So here you can see that my, I believe my generic name is being displayed by default. And to turn that off, let me just delete this part, go back into my library. And if I look on the right side here, where it says generic name, it says to display the value. I'm just gonna say, do not display the generic name. We just want the value to be used for this part. So let's go ahead and place it. And there's that value USB 3320. So now, I, now we have a nice looking part on our schematic. We can move on to, you know, adding resistors, capacitors, wiring up the schematic and so forth. And that's it. Hope you guys liked this video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know below. Um, if you have any recommendations for future videos that we should make, also you can let us know in the comments. And I will see you guys uh, for the next video where we're going to be creating the footprint for this part. All right, thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.